JP Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee joins us now. He's got a buy rating on the name. Samik, big picture here. What do you think the impact is going to be of these delays? Will shoppers trade down? Will they wait for an iPhone 14? Any chance they're going to switch to a competitor? Yep, no, and thanks for having me on the show. Uh, as, as we think about demand, we're not expecting consumers, as you sort of pointed out before as well, to really switch out and sort of move to a different platform. And you think about sort of evidence from iPhone 12 or iPhone 13 cycles as well, typically supply delays don't cause a consumer to sort of delay or sort of forfeit that purchase as such. Typically, a customer will just sort of put in an order, wait for it for roughly a month. Right now, the lead times are about sort of 30, 40 days. Uh, obviously, from a standpoint of a full fiscal year, we don't see as much of a material impact, but clearly what we are all concerned about is what it means for the December quarter. Uh, as we've sort of addressed some of the supply issues, we are forecasting the December quarter to be a year over year decline for Apple on the revenue side, and that would be sort of the first time you've seen that happen since like December 18 and uh, March 19 quarter. So definitely a material impact for the quarter, but overall from a demand perspective or for fiscal year, we're not expecting that to really drive customers to change their buying behavior as such. Going back to what Eunice Yoon was reporting about those Foxconn protests, what kind of impact do you see them having big picture long term on Apple, its ecosystem? Um, do you think we're going to see changes as a result of them or is there no impact? Yeah, no, definitely there'll be an impact on the supply chain and how Apple thinks about the supply chain, right? Uh, as we've sort of forecasted the supply chain and how Apple wants to restructure it, we see an increasing portion of the supply moving to India. We've had some forecasts we published around that as to where the long-term sort of India supply chain goes. But I think in the near term, what you're going to see Apple do is the Pro and the Pro Max are heavily reliant on the facility that's impacted right now. So there's little wiggle room around that. Uh, where there's a bit more wiggle room for supply to be sort of moving to alternate suppliers is the base iPhone 14 models, the 14, 14 Plus, and iPhone 13 and the other iPhone models. So what you're tra probably going to look for Apple to do is, as you can already see on, Black on sort of the Black Friday promotions, you don't have as much promotions on the Pro and the Pro Max. You're really going to see sort of the other models, iPhone 13 and below, getting promoted for consumer adoption and purchases right here. And there's a bit more alternative supply that can be pulled through there. The Pro and the Pro Max, which is where the consumer demand has been sort of the most, are going to be a bit more impacted near term from the supply issues. I wonder whether or not, I mean, I know this is um, hypothetical, but if you were to create Apple today, how much supply would you have based in China if you could start over? And how much of this is just inertia from the past 30 years of globalization? Yeah, no, great question. I think largely when you took, uh, take a look at how companies want to treat their supply chain longer term, they want to sort of have most of the domestic demands uh, catered to from the domestic supply, right? So when you think about it on a more regional basis, you're probably going to expect companies to sort of, companies like Apple to cater to about sort of 20, 15 to 20% of the supply from the domestic market and then sort of the remaining from as close to their sort of demand centers as possible. Now, clearly that will take a long time to sort of get there. We are seeing some of the other products that are easier to move, get there faster, but not the iPhone. But I think it, it, longer on, you won't get there exactly, but very close to it. Uh, just a final question about wearables. We talk so much about the iPhone, but what is your outlook for the watch and also AirPods this holiday season? Yeah, no, uh, we've been very excited about the Watch Ultra particularly, I would say. Mo less so about units, more about what the uh, AI revenue implications are for that. The way we see that product doing in terms of lead times, solid demand, as well as driving a lot of premiumization, as we call it, of the uh, watch, watch sort of product line itself, where consumers switch for the better battery life, and essentially you're getting sort of higher revenue from it. Uh, when you think about the AirPods, uh, that's again some, a product that's not as impacted by the supply cons constraints. So you're going to see that probably emerge as a big sort of holiday gift uh, uh, product uh, going, going into the sort of last few weeks of the year. So again, expect strong momentum there, but probably partly benefiting from the supply constraints on certain other products, but uh, mm -hmm. expect robust quarters in terms of revenue. Great, will be fascinating to watch. Samike, thank you so much for joining us on this Black Friday.